Welcome back to the Simple Farmhouse Life podcast, episode 51. This week, I'm going to talk about being a blogger. My plan was to share a week in the life of a full-time blogger, basically my schedule, what it looks like, but I ended up also getting on Instagram and putting up a Q&A box to ask what all your questions are on blogging as a business, as a work at home mom, how I balance things, and I got lots of good questions. So I'm going to do the schedule thing briefly and then take a little bit more time to dive into the questions. Before I dive in, I want to make sure that you have access to my free 10 day email course on how to start a blog. You can get that at bit.ly slash start a blog from scratch. My name is Lisa, mom of six and creator of the blog and YouTube channel, Farmhouse on Boone. Join me as I share with you my love for creating a handmade home from scratch cooking and a little mom and entrepreneur life along the way. Now the schedule of my blogging takes many different forms week to week. It depends on what we're working on. It depends on what season we're in, literally, and then also like as a family. So for example, in the summer, It looks really different because everybody wakes up really early. So usually we are up around 5.30 or so, and that includes kids. And then I'm out milking the goat because we now have a goat by seven. And then also homeschool is a little bit different in the summer. And then Daniel just started laying down for naps. The point here is that things have recently changed. I used to have to do work with Daniel in the wrap when he was smaller, and now my schedule sort of works around his naps, whereas a year ago it worked around Micah's naps. I will give you an example of what it looks like right now, but just know that being a work at home mom, because there are children involved and there are household responsibilities, it never looks the same at all. Essentially what happens is I have a list for the week of what I need to accomplish. And then usually I will add a few tasks to each day and that will be the focus for the day. But then that list will change throughout the week. I don't typically work on Sunday at all. I don't hardly look at anything. I might get on Instagram to post or answer a few DMs, but for the most part, I don't. What I used to do is on Sunday night, I used to look at my to-do list and really map out the week Sunday night. Lately, I haven't been doing that. I just got burnt out on that. My mind is so focused on the weekend. It's just so far away from my business. And so I've been putting that off. Sunday night, we come home from a long day. We usually are visiting family. And I just want to put on a show with Luke in bed and just relax and do nothing. And so I haven't been looking at my schedule. Monday morning, that means that I have to do a lot of planning and organizing. So usually I get on my Trello board. I use Trello. It's a free website, trello.com for organizing with a team because it's online. Everyone on my team can log in and look at what we are posting for the week, what videos are going up, Sometimes if I'm really organized, I have what podcasts are going up and that is where I will arrange things on Monday to make sure everything is going out at the right time. So sometimes I will have a certain thing in the position of blog post one on Trello Monday morning and then realize that for various factors, it needs to be moved to blog post two, whether it is because the video had a few things I needed to add and it comes out later in the week. I will stand there at Trello, putting things in the position for the week, for the next week, as best I can. And the next week, of course, is subject to change. I have a board that has each week. So it'll say week of July 6th, for example, that's this coming up week. And then it'll have blog post one and then it'll have what, what I'm gonna be posting with any notes in that particular bullet point, blog post two, video one, video two, podcast one, podcast two. Now I noticed in lots of the questions that I got from Instagram, people asked how far ahead I plan. That podcast thing is very fluid. It's the one thing I don't plan far ahead on. So as I'm recording this podcast right now, I have 50, episode 50 already published, and I am recording 51 and have nothing in between. So you can see that podcast comes in more real time, whereas the blog posts and the YouTube videos are 
more produced and take more time. I have a team working on them. And so I have to organize myself weeks in advance so that people have time to work on it because I can't expect them to get the media, stay up late at night and get it published all on the same day. That's something I don't mind doing, which is why I mostly handle my podcast at this point, but it's not something I can do with a team. And so I actually do plan pretty far ahead with my blog. So to give you an example, I'm just gonna pull up my Trello board because I feel like this will give you the best example. I have week of 629, that's the week we're working in currently. The first blog post has already gone up. The second blog post will be scheduled for this Friday. The two videos are uploaded and scheduled on YouTube, which is also something that I do on Monday. I receive the hard drive back from my video editor on Sunday. And so on Monday, I have all of the completed videos. I just have to upload them to YouTube and add tag words and schedule them out for the week. Also, Monday involves answering emails. I get lots and lots of emails, and I typically avoid them completely on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, throughout the week, I try to answer them as they come in, but Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I just like to throw my phone away, typically, and just enjoy myself. And so, Monday morning means that I need to get through my inbox. So, between uploading videos, organizing Trello, answering emails, all of my work time is typically taken up in that amount of time. Now, on Trello 7.6, I have blog post one, DIY cafe curtains, blog post two, fermented hot sauce. I actually added a third blog post for next week, strawberry goat cheese ice cream, and then I have vlog one, cafe curtains, vlog two, latest antique finds. Okay, so how that works, you notice blog post one and vlog one corresponded. I already finished that video a week ago. I gave it to my video editor. She'll have a week to complete that, and then I will upload it as an unlisted video, and then my blog writer will write blog post one based on vlog one. So hopefully that's not confusing, but this is something that has really happened over time. I know if I would have heard this explanation when I first started my blog, I would have been so overwhelmed and thought there's no way I will end up having any organizational system like that, but it all has come in time. So I've added new team members very much one at a time. I've added Trello boards and how I organize very much one at a time to where a system has emerged even though I'm not personally a very organized person at all, but whenever you build on things, systems and processes do emerge and that is what has happened. I'll go more into the amount of time I spend and all of that in the Q&A because I got a lot of Q&As. Now on the Trello board, I also have week of 713, 720, and 727, and that's as far as I have planned out. I only have vlog videos listed through 720, because what will happen between now and 727 is a lot of things will come up. So for example, right now in our kitchen, we just had the office cabinets installed and I'm waiting on hardware. And whenever those come and I install them, it will be time for an office reveal. But I don't have that written on my board yet because I don't know when that's going to happen. But I also don't have 727 and beyond filled out because I know that things will come up that we'll be working on. So another example of this is we are working on a cottage makeover and I'm waiting on a carpenter who we already have called and hired. And so I know that that vlog is going to end up somewhere probably in 727 through August something. And so I'm just leaving it open for that. And that also explains how things get switched around a lot. So I might have a certain vlog listed on 720, but then suddenly the contractor is able to come over and put on the hardware and office reveal ends up going up instead and I'll swap things out. I try, and if, if you're on my team and listening to this, you're probably like, sure. Um, I try to not swap things out last minute so that nobody has to change what they were working on, but it does happen and I try my best. I'm, I am not the most organized person. So if you feel like you want to blog, but you're not that organized, this hopefully will give you hope. Okay, so that's Monday. Tuesday typically will be recording podcast is usually what's on my list for Tuesdays and every other week I do payroll. So podcast and payroll is usually what Tuesdays are all about. Sometimes there's time to throw in something else, but usually that's about all I can get done. 
Wednesday and Thursday are typically when I will shoot videos if any videos need to be shot. So it might be a vlog style video. So lately I've been doing on my YouTube channel a This Week on the Homestead weekly series where I share projects we're doing around here. So on Wednesday and Thursday, those are the days that we will be working on those projects, documenting them, and then if I have a blog post that needs photographs, typically I will throw that in Wednesday or Thursday at nap time. So say I have sourdough rye bread, which I do, um, two weeks from now on the Trello board. Those photos need to be taken soon and uploaded to WordPress so that that process can get started. And so I will usually, at the beginning of the week, I will look at what's coming up and then write on my list, just in my notes, I have a to-do list, take photos for sourdough rye bread or test the recipe for sourdough rye bread. And with Trello and my notes app, I'm able to make a Monday through Friday list of what needs to happen. Now, usually on Fridays, my sister and I will take the kids on a play date. And so I don't typically schedule anything for Friday. Usually maybe a few things. So typically what Friday's list looks like is post second YouTube video, which usually it's already scheduled, but I might look it over, check my keywords, check my thumbnail and post second podcast. So if you've been a follower of this podcast, you might have noticed a loose schedule that I post usually on Wednesdays and Fridays. Now, typically that's what I do, but it's been running a little bit weird lately. But usually I will post a podcast on Wednesday and Friday and a YouTube video on Tuesday and Friday and my blog posts also on Tuesday and Friday. And then I always do busy work type stuff in my night working slot. So I will sit with my laptop with my kids and we'll watch a show from like 7 to 8 or 8.30 before they do their chores, like the goats and the chickens, those are at 8.30. Between seven and 8.30, a lot of times, I will do busy work type stuff. This is when the boys are in bed. I'll do like sending out emails, creating new Pinterest graphics, posting to Pinterest, adding videos to my Facebook. There's these certain jobs in blogging that require next to no thought that are fun to do. And then there's certain tasks that require all of your thought and all of your attention. And the best strategy that I've learned with working with kids is to prioritize those for certain times. So when Daniel's napping, that is not the time for me to answer emails, answer comments, even post to Instagram. When Daniel's sleeping, that's like magic hour. That's like the only time all day that I have completely free with no noise. I mean, really, there's lots of noise, but if Luke takes the kids, which he usually will do because it's like a sacred time, if Daniel's asleep and the kids are outside, there isn't any planning a mood board for a room design or cleaning or cooking or answering emails or any of those kind of tasks that I can totally do with kids. That's when I think, okay, I need to record a podcast, record a video, get something done that requires all of my thought, write a blog post, things like that. I really try to prioritize those types of things. And then I can fill in different other things when I don't have as much concentration available. And that's pretty much the week. Now I got asked a lot and I'll just answer this now on the Q and A, how much time I spend daily on my blog. Typically I usually say that I get about four hours a day to work on my blog. Now this might sound like a lot, but it also is completely spread out throughout the day. So I might get an hour in the morning, two hours at nap in the afternoon, and then an hour before bedtime. That is typically how it plays out. It might be a little bit more here, a little bit less there. There might be days where, because we have a contractor here building cabinets or the chimney guy, which was here last week, that I don't get any of that time. But on an average day, I would say about four hours gets devoted to my blog all throughout the day. This is what I like about blogging so much is I can, it can be really flexible, but also at the same time, it can be challenging and it requires a lot of intention to block those times and then to be focused on the kids and the home throughout the other times of the day. I got a lot of questions about screen time, I guess because when you need to get stuff done with kids, screen time does happen. So a lot of people asked about screen time and how I do that with my kids. We do not have a set limit on screen time. 
but it is something that we try to avoid as much as possible. Some days that looks really good. The kids are outside all day long. That's how it's been today so far. They've been outside all day long. And then sometimes there is more screen time. So sometimes in the afternoon, whenever it's nap time, I really value that quiet time. And we have six kids, as you know. And so two hours can be a long time. So sometimes they'll do audiobooks on their iPad. We have one iPad that all of the kids share. Actually, it's it belongs to the oldest child, but a lot of the kids get on it. And it is my intention to limit that very often. One of my sons owns a Kindle and he is not at all allowed free access to it. There are times when he gets it and there are months at a time where he doesn't because he will become actually pretty obsessed with it. So if, if I gave it to him all the time, he'd be on it all the time. This is what I've discovered. And so I will take it away and then maybe he'll get it on a car ride to church or something. Sometimes I let him have it on Friday nights when my sister is here babysitting while we do our date night. The answer to the screen time question is our kids do have screen time for sure. It's not like something that we 100% avoid, but it also is something I'm very mindful of and I don't want them on it constantly. It would be super easy, which is what I tell them all the time because you know kids get frustrated when they can't have access to screen time all the time. And I'm just telling them, you know, it'd be a lot easier if I gave it to you, but that is not what this is about. This is about doing what is best for you and you being glued to a screen all day isn't gonna work. Also just on the screen time tangent, there's so much guilt and shame surrounding screen time. And I try to remember that back in the day, People thought reading was bad and wanted no books, no kids to have books. Um, I think radio was the same way. Anytime there's something new. Now, of course, undoubtedly, there is an addiction component to screen time. And I think us adults all are very aware of that because we've experienced it. Let's face it. If we look at our phones, if we have Instagram, if we have Facebook, you know that pull to check it. I know that that exists and that's why I'm so mindful of it. And I don't think that kids should be glued to screens constantly, but also don't feel terrible if your kids use screens sometimes. I used to feel like that when I was a young mother and I realize now that everything isn't so black and white. There's a lot of room for error, a lot of grace, a lot of margin, and also everybody's just in different seasons of life. So I know some people are able to avoid it 100%, but they might just have, um, only one little baby or something. I get a lot of people who are really passionate about screen time and then I find out that they have one eight-month-old. Well, that that's not hard. I too have an eight-month-old who watches zero screens. So just remember that and don't beat yourself up and feel really guilty. That's just a little side tangent. I just see so much shame going on about that. And it's it's also really funny how with, if a child is reading a book, no matter what book, it could even be such a dumb book not profitable book. And as long as it's a book, it's okay. And I'm guilty of this myself. I feel this way sometimes like, okay, books are wholesome. So even if it's a dumb, as Charlotte Mason calls twaddle type book, it feels allowed in my mind, but then watching like a wholesome movie would be screen time. And so try to realize that that is definitely just because it's a new technology that we feel that way. Okay rant over. I'm in a blog slash YouTube groove with three kids, but what about when baby comes? So you all know my strategy with baby. It is strap them on for the first six months. They sleep there and just take them out to nurse. That's my strategy. That's what I did with the last two babies while trying to blog, but I guess all babies are different. All of mine loved being wrapped constantly. So that definitely did make it really easy. I just went from wrapping them and doing all my tutorials with a baby on me to he's now eight months and napping down. And so it really actually wasn't difficult with the baby. The bigger problem is when they are loud and start crawling. And then of course, when they're toddlers. So for me, the zero to six month time with a baby is one of the easiest times to get work done, but it's usually after that, that the challenge starts happening and why it's very helpful for me to have Luke home. What do the kids do while you are working? So the oldest four 
they can be running around the house, playing outside. They're busy just doing whatever kids do. Playing on the playground, we have a zip line, a trampoline, a huge playground. They have a fort in the barn. So they have plenty to do. Typically, it's the toddler and the baby that are the biggest issue. That's why I focus so much on getting the hard work done during nap times. Daniel now has two naps a day. Micah has one in the afternoon. Those are both very sacred times. During the morning, like right now, Luke has Micah. And then in the afternoon, Micah will be sleeping as well. So that's when I'm able to get a bulk of my work done is during those times. That's what I've always done. Even before Luke was home, nap time was it. And I made sure to only get the most important work done during those hours, nothing else. No housework, no answering emails. Sometimes we think we're doing work, but it's just the kind of work that doesn't really move the needle. And it does have to be done. It can be done in the more distracted times. So if like, for example, if the oldest four kids are all playing outside, they're doing who knows what. If I have Micah and Daniel in with me in the kitchen, like maybe with the French doors closed and they're kind of trapped in the kitchen and they're, you know, getting into everything, I can answer emails or I can make dinner. I can do some of those things that don't require my full attention. Do you have one day to take all the pictures for your IG for one month? Wouldn't that be the smart thing to do? Yes. <laughs> I don't though. I've always thought about how great that'd be to do, but if you follow me on Instagram, you might know that I'm not good at that. I really do Instagram. So I, a lot of days won't post at all. And then if I see something pretty, I'll take a picture of it and then post it. I am so not a planner with Instagram. Now, some people treat Instagram as their full business and they have a lot of strategy with that. I am not one of those people. I feel like you can only put your true focus on so many different things. Now, when I was building it up, I did. So when I was getting from like zero to 50,000 subscribers, or not subscribers, uh, followers, I was very diligent about Instagram. But the last year or so, I just post occasionally. At what time do you take the pictures for your tutorials? I will just take them as I'm going. Now, since I started video, which has been about two and a half years now, I always forget to take the in-process shots of what I'm doing, so what I will do instead is just screenshot the video as I'm doing the next step, and then I'll always take actual photos with my camera for the final product. What does your setup, equipment, and workflow look like? So I have two tripods, three cameras, a microphone, and then some light boxes. But lately on my YouTube channel, I've been more fo focused on the vlog style content and not the as polished type content because I'm finding that people really like that. So I'm just using my little vlog camera more often than not and then taking thumbnail photos and Instagram photos and tutorial photos with my nice camera. I used to set up, and I, I still will do this, but not every time at all, two DSLR cameras, one facing forward and one facing at the project or the food and lights and the mic and record all the videos that way and then switch back and forth between the two cameras during the editing process. Lately, it's been a lot more casual, mostly I think because I do have a sixth child and I've just been less diligent to do the highly produced videos, but it's still totally working. Staying focused at home with a full house. This is actually really difficult. And like I said, you really have to, if you're going to be a work at home mom, work with the time blocks. So for example, right now, I just saw that Daniel's awake on the camera upstairs. And so my time is coming to a close and now it is time for me to focus on lunch for the kids, doing laundry, all of the mom things, focusing on the kids and to put work away until the afternoon nap because that's what gets really frustrating. I find that whenever I try to get work and kids all done at the same time and not block it out, that I, one, don't do either one of them very well, and two, get extremely frustrated and upset because it just doesn't work because kids aren't quiet. And so having those time set out and also your expectations with yourself, with your spouse, or with a caregiver of some kind. If, if you have like a babysitter a couple hours a week, knowing that that's when you're going to get the work done. Knowing those times is really important so that you don't have to always split your focus. Okay, just passed off the baby to Luke actually. He's on the front porch reading Narnia to the children. So this will give me a little bit more time to record the podcast. Like I said, all so flexible. It's hard for me to articulate exactly how 
this whole life works, but trying my best. A lot of questions about coming up with post ideas and do I ever have trouble coming up with new content ideas? I remember this being my dad's concern whenever I told him that Luke was gonna quit his job. He's like, wait, what? What if you run out of ideas? That has somehow not been a problem in four and a half years since I've been blogging at all. Basically what happens is I go through life doing the projects and cooking the food that I would do and then I share it. So for an example, we are doing a little makeover in the boys room. I found some $10 antique beds on Facebook Marketplace just last week and now I need a bed skirt that needs to be custom because of the way that everything falls. It, I can't find a bed skirt that works. I'm going to record me making the bed skirt and that is going to be a tutorial. And this is just what happens constantly is I'm working on things, we're turning this place into a homestead and I share it along the way as issues come up like, okay, there are flies out by the goats. This is this actually hasn't happened, but just an example. Now I will learn how to make a fly spray and show you how to do that. Or like the other day, I made these cast iron skillet pizzas. And usually I, I bake the crust in the oven, but I didn't have enough oven space. And so I was making some just with starter right on the stove. And I'm like, ding, this is a good idea. Uh, and so that will end up coming over to the blog. And if that didn't happen, if I ever did run out of ideas, I always figure that I could redo the ones I've already done in a new way. So I've made drop cloth curtains in the uh, mud room and I dyed them a certain like navy color. Maybe I could make some gray ones with a ruffle at the bottom and ties at the top or you know, there's always some variation. So I've done a several pillow cover tutorials, but lately I've been thinking about what if I did a little cross stitch pattern on them, just freehand with some embroidery thread that might be really pretty, that would be a whole new tutorial. And so there's always, always new ideas, new projects, there's collaborations, there's just a talking type of video or blog post where I share things that I'm learning. As long as you are living and doing and learning, there's always content. Actually, I've had this conversation with several blogger friends and they all agree that the biggest problem is too many ideas, not, not enough. Which once you get into blogging, I think you would see that you'd be the exact same way. The ideas, whenever you have one, they just spark like 10 more ideas. Okay, another question about feeding everyone and working. So I try to, in my non-work times, get food going. For example, right now there's chicken in the oven. I got that going earlier today whenever we were, after we milk the goats, before Daniel goes down, there is just this morning time where I'm cleaning up the kitchen and swapping out the kefir grains and making a new batch of water kefir. That's when I will throw chicken in the oven, maybe some sweet potatoes, or maybe we'll have some leftover bread and we'll make like a sandwich. Try to constantly keep food going and thinking about it whenever it is the non-work times, I like to get easy things going, like a big pot of soup, and then we'll eat that for days. You all know I'm very simple with my meals. I don't like to do fancy recipes. I just like to cook protein and vegetables, and a lot of times it ends up being more utilitarian than anything. Now in the evening, I don't do any work from after nap until after bed. And so there's a nice long time in the evening where if we wanna have a little bit more fun with meals, like my daughter, um, one of my daughters really loves to cook, we will hang out in the kitchen and make pizza crusts or pasta or something a little bit more time consuming. Typically we'll do it in that time slot if we don't have anything else going on, which we try to have as little as possible going on. Okay, this has nothing to do with blogging, but I got lots of questions and I always get lots of questions about exercise. I don't, I do not, I just have not figured out how to fit that in. And I know a lot of moms do, and I feel like that'd be really awesome, but I'm in a season of life that feels sort of in the trenches with having a toddler and a baby. And so no, I, I'm just trying to get by. <laughs> I exercise just feels like way too much extra work for me. Also, I know I keep saying this, but I truly, I got a lot of questions about one-on-one -on -one time with the kids and I get this all the time. And I 
try to do things that are one-on-one with kids. Like for example, we go into town Monday night for three hours. My girls have gymnastics and one son of mine and I, we go and we get supplies. So groceries or whatever I need for the blog this week. And we call that mommy and Eli time. And then a lot of times on Saturdays, my uh, daughters, especially my second daughter, like to go into town and go to this little coffee shop and go to a few shops. And so we often do that. And then of course, Daniel and I get tons of alone time because I'm nursing him and he sleeps in my bed at night, most of the night. And so it's not something I focus on specifically. I think that it would be just be too stressful for me to think about. And I also, it feels like another one of those modern day things that we put too much worry and emphasis on and stress and guilt on moms about where it, Things just used to be easier. I feel like with moms, like my my mom didn't have to worry about that. I don't think anybody asked her, hey, do you spend one-on-one time with each one of your girls? I highly doubt anybody asked her that. And I still am good, like with my mom. I don't have, we're we're good, we're friends. We hang out every week. She supports me. Um, She supports my sisters. We get together. So anyways, I just, I do feel like that is one of those things that we put too much emphasis and stress and guilt on ourselves about how to create content that people want to see. This is an ever changing thing. And there are failures. There are wins and there are failures. There are times when turns out nobody cared to see that tutorial. And then there are times when something I didn't expect people love. And then I try to make more of things like that and less of the things that they don't like. And it's just a process that you will learn as you go. How did you gain the confidence to believe you had something worthwhile to say? So this is called in the blog world, imposter syndrome, and everybody goes through it. Pretty much everybody, unless you are the least self-aware person and just think that everything, like you're God's gift to man, I think everybody struggles with this one. And I personally struggled with it way, way more in the beginning because really I didn't have anybody looking at the blog. And so it felt weird putting in so much effort for something that like really nobody was going to see. But over time, I just try to fight that feeling and know that there are a lot of people who tell me that they enjoy seeing how I do things, even though they really don't feel that groundbreaking. And a lot of times it's just what I'm learning that I'm sharing with people. But yeah, I still fight that. I truly do. Every time I make a video, I have this thought like, who's even gonna care about this? This is a bad idea. I mean, nearly every video, I think that. I was just thinking about that yesterday. I was recording us, kind of like a day in the life video of us redoing the kids' rooms. And I don't know, the things I got footage of, I'm like, nobody's gonna care about this, but I'm just gonna post it. And it might flop, it might not. But whenever you have a goal, which I always have a goal, of two posts and two videos every week. I've had this goal for over two years. And before I had that goal, I had two posts a week consistently. Even if it's not the best idea in the absolute world, it's just an idea, um, I just will post it. And then if it tanks, then I'll have learned something and I'll, I'll move forward. But if the goal is to get two done every week, sometimes you just have to post those things that you think, is this even worthwhile? And, and just try it. So many questions about my income. I'm not gonna share that. I, it, I know that some bloggers do, and I know that there's this thing where people hate the stigma around income, but I just feel so weird. I mean, that would just feel like me standing here naked in front of you. So I, I will say that it is plenty for me and my family. I get asked if it um, is consistent It is consistently far and above what he used to make at his job, but it isn't consistent. So it's consistent in that it's always enough to support us, but some months are, of course, better than others. Do you do your own website? How do you deal with IT problems slash issues? At the moment, I pay for a lot of that done. Now, in the beginning, I did pretty much everything myself, and that is why my blog course walks people through how to do literally everything from scratch, how to get a WordPress site up and running and writing blog posts. I did that in the beginning, but now anytime I have an issue, I usually hire it done. This is this is what I've done with everything with my blog business. I've hired teams over time, which would have 
to my very frugal nature self seemed so wasteful in the beginning. I felt this way about a lot of things. Like if you can just do it yourself, you save so much money. But then you start to realize whenever you are building a business and you're making an income that actually a lot of times you can hire people to do certain tasks and then you can do tasks that make even more money and you end up making more by spending more. And this is something I've only learned in the past couple years, but it's definitely been a mind shift because I used to would have thought the complete opposite and thought that seemed so wasteful. But um, yes, anything that I don't immediately know how to do, I hire done because in the time it would take me to learn it, I could have been doing other things that are more profitable or spending time with my family, which was the goal that this whole thing started with. I think I should probably do a part two because there's so many and this is getting really, really long. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Simple Farmhouse Life podcast. If you have not yet grabbed my free resource, my 10 day guide on how to start a blog, you can get that at bit.ly slash start a blog from scratch. It's a free 10 day email course walking you through the steps. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you in the next episode of the Simple Farmhouse Life podcast.